So another way of showing you how to create an attribute and tag an attribute to a class in this case and how to find out if that attribute's there and all that. Let's let's take this a step further and, and see if we can build a little bit more robust testing framework. Again, if you've used testing frameworks in the past, this should look familiar. If not, don't stress it. I am going to make a, a method here, public void my test one and pretend in here I wrote some code to test something. If you want to learn about unit testing, you can certainly watch my game engine programming playlist. I do a lot of unit testing in there. But pretend I have some code in here that's doing some testing like that. In fact, why don't we just, heck, let's console right line. Doing some testing like so. And, and then let's do public void my test to and I'm actually going to name it something different. My test method, too, just to prove to you that the method names have absolutely no meaning. And let's say in this method, we're also doing some testing, some other testing. And let's say we have a helper method here. I'm just going to say public void helper method. And this helper method is not necessarily a test method. It's, it's just there's some code in here that helps our tests get their job done. I hope you have the resolution turned up to HD. I'm going a little small here on you, sorry. Okay, in this helper method, let's just say we want to call the helper method from test1 because it's helping us do stuff. And we'll call it from test method2. Now, what we want is an automatic way to execute this method and to execute this method. But we do not want to automatically execute this method. So what we're going to do is make another attribute. I'll call it test method attribute. And it will inherit from attribute, just like its test attribute counterpart. And all we have to do here is, again, add the brackets to customize our class and say test method. And then notice, as I typed that out, test uh, we get to an option here of test and test method, but we don't get attribute on the end. And that is because the attribute is not required. If you leave it off, the compiler will just insert it for you. And so that's kind of nice. I can just say test instead of test attribute. All right, And attribute with a capital A, that's the only thing the compiler will attempt to insert for you. If you try to do something different, it will not work. So I, we can actually shorten this out. I can say test method. Like so. I could say test method attribute, but that's kind of verbose. Let's just say test method. So my test one, that's a test method. And then we'll make my test method two a test method as well. Okay, so all we've done is added two more attributes here that do absolutely nothing. They just sit there embedded inside the assembly's metadata, the extra information, some actual physical tables inside your EXE, your DLL, whatever you compile to. They just sit there and do nothing, right? And it's up to us to act upon them and do something. So remember this code we wrote in the last video? Sorry, I'm doing a lot of scrolling. Where we say, hey, let's go find all the classes that have a test attribute on them. Uh, now we need to go through all these types and find all the the methods that have test method on them and then execute those methods. Okay, so this is like reflection at its finest. Re reflection meaning, hey, give me the types and inside the type give me the custom attributes. And now I'm going to look at these methods and figure out which ones have test methods on there. And so when I say reflection, think of yourself looking in a mirror. You can see if your hair's messed up and clean it up and that kind of thing. Same idea here. We are looking at the assembly here, finding the types and seeing what ones have test attributes. This is called reflection. And we're going to do we're going to do a little bit more of it right here. Okay, we know that we have a test suite and its name is right there. So I'll say running tests in suite and suffix it with the name there. And then now we just have to find all the methods that have test method on them. Well, it's gonna, the query is going to look a lot like this. Let's var test methods gets from m in t dot give me the methods okay inside that type where m dot hey give me the custom attributes on that method dot any of them 
where any of them, A is test method attribute, select M. All right, this is, oh, and again, I have to pass false here. I'll uh, show you what that means in a different video. So this query grabs all the test suites. Then this one just grabs the methods within the particular test suite. And now what we have to do is instantiate one of these classes and then start executing the tests on that instance that we create. All right, so that's hopefully pretty straightforward. I'm going to say object test suite instance gets and then there's this class built in called the activator All right, and the activator is pretty cool I can say hey create an instance and all it wants well there's lots of overloads but the overload I'm interested in is the one that takes a type so I'm going to give it the current test suite type that we have so create an instance of that type and now look at this look at this I have an instance of my test suite my test suite, I've created an instance of it right there. All right, and then now one by one for each method info, minfo in the test methods. Method info is another built in class, just like type. But if I click on that, I can find out all sorts of information about my method. I can see, uh, I can find out the return type, method info, actually inherits method base and if I look at method base this actually has a lot more stuff in it is it abstract uh, what's the accessibility of it is it assembly family final if you want to understand all that then I got visibility videos you can look at private public is it static all oh, that's look at all this information we can get about a method all right this is this is called reflection we can look at a method info and it's like the methods looking in the mirror and saying hey am I public am I private am I static am I Hopefully you're getting the idea there. So let's get all the method infos and the test methods. And then watch this. Minfo dot invoke. And the invoke function takes an object in which to invoke the method upon. We have that right here, don't we? Test suite instance. I'll pass it right there. And then it takes an object array of parameters. Well, it just so happens that we're relying on these test methods to take no parameters. So we have to, we'll just pass a new object array with nothing in it right there. Okay, so this this isn't very much code inside of me. And I went and grabbed all the test suites. I found all the test methods inside of the, each suite. I create an instance of the suite, and then I go invoke methods on it, all dynamically, all using reflection. Control F5, look at this, running the test in tests and sweet my test suite and here's the output remember we have this output we put inside of our tests okay doing some testing doing some other testing all right but our helper method was never invoked uh, by itself it was invoked in the context of my test methods in fact if I take this out I'll take it out of both of them and I can console write line this method will never be invoked because it does not have a test method attribute on it. Wow, that's a long line of code. But watch, I'm going to control F5 and we won't see that in the output. You see it in the output? I told you you wouldn't see it in the output. So anyway, there you go. We're, we are so close to writing a, a, a test suite. This is this is pretty cool. This is Go use NUnit if you want to. Or I think Visual Studio even comes with... Well, oh, look, tests. You can create tests and things. And they have their own test suite, but it works the exact same way. You just tag your methods with attributes, and then it goes and finds the attributes and executes them. And who would have thunk it's actually that easy to, to, to build a test suite, or at least the bare bones of it.